Hello and welcome to Cask Theology, and today we will be tossing a coin to the Church of the Eternal Fire, which is a religion found in The Witcher. The Witcher, of course, is a series of games and books. So, here is your spoiler warning for today, as I will be covering stuff in the books, games, and probably the recent TV show, so consider yourself warned. With that said, go and grab yourself a Rivian Creek, and let's ask the question, who are the Church of the Eternal Fire? Now, as usual with these, we're going to be looking at the history and setting, their core beliefs, uh, some of the rituals and practices, and then we'll see if there's any comparisons with religions that we might be familiar with in the real world. So, without further ado, let's dive into the history and setting. Long, long ago, the world experienced an event that would change it forever. This event was called the Conjunction of the Spheres, and it was an astronomical event where the barriers between the worlds themselves broke down. In its wake, the conjunction left many things behind. The original inhabitants of the world, the gnomes, dwarves, elves and halflings, soon realised what had passed through these barriers. Monsters, such as the vampire or ghoul, that had got no place in the ecosystem. Worse still, the world now had something new flowing through it, a strange new force known as magic. But something else had passed through these many rifts as well, something which would cause the biggest change to the world. It was a new sentient race that were now stranded here. Humans. The humans, much as they had been on their homeworld, were not content to just sit and settle in one place, and so they set off exploring, settling, and conquering. They eventually arrived on the continent, which is the location of the Witcher books and games that we get to explore. While exploring this new land, they came across a small abandoned elven settlement, which was to become the site of the modern-day city of Novigrad. While exploring, two of them saw a strange glow emanating from one of the many ruined buildings, and naturally decided to investigate. Curiously walking inside, they saw a great flame burning in a huge dish, and a being stood in front of it. They asked the being what they were doing there, and the being simply replied, I guard the eternal fire, as long as it will flame in this place, so long as this city and your kin will endure. Upon saying this, the being vanished, and the bewildered explorers decided that it must be a divine portent, and so assigned some people to guard this sacred flame. A while later, some priests of the followers of the god Creve discovered the group and reasoned that the guardians of the flame had been blessed by their god, and began to help the settlers to organise their ideas and beliefs, which would eventually become the Cult of the Eternal Fire. The town started to attract many, especially with its fancy brick housing, and along came artisans, craftsmen, traders, and converts. The town grew into a city, and it was known as the Free City of Novigrad, and the Cult of the Eternal Fire grew with it, with even non-humans worshipping the flame. By the events of The Witcher 3, this cult has become a full-blown church, with believers in many of the northern cities and with fingers in many pies. Indeed, Radovid V, King of Redania is a fanatic believer in the Eternal Fire, and it's here where the games take over the lore baton, because the books don't really cover this period of time. In the events of the third game, the church holds a lot of power and influence within and without of its Novigrad borders. Novigrad itself is ruled by the church, and has not one but three military arms, although not officially. It has a priesthood, and it has a very strict hierarchy. They have a grand temple in Novigrad, as well as many small scattered temples and shrines dotted around the country. And with that, it's time to discuss what the church actually believes. The church, of course, still worships that flame found all those years ago, and they believe that this flame will be a guide through the darkness and the light of hope for the future, and it's a symbol of survival and a beacon of better days to come. The church is a bit of a paradox, as it's both inclusive and exclusive, and takes its cues from the followers of Creve when it first formed. The faith is an evangelical one, so you'll often find reverends and preachers going out and preaching to all and sundry in order to win new converts. They believe that wherever the flame persists, it protects those who believe against the evils of the world. And this is where the exclusion part comes in. The church is, in essence, human-centric. Non-humans and monsters are generally seen as lesser, or abominations, and the church has a very anti-magic, anti-non-human stance, as they believe that magic would sully the purity of the flame. 
During the events of The Witcher 3, the church is currently exerting its power in the form of witch hunts, burning practitioners of magic and non-humans alike in an inquisition, with one of its militant arms, the Witch Hunters. These witch hunts are very public and very brutal, with torture and public burnings accepted as the methods by which the church will root out evil which might contaminate the purity of the flame. The church are not fond of witches either, although they are human, they use rudimentary magic, and through the witcher trials, they aren't quite human anymore. That said though, they do hunt and kill monsters, and are a force for good, so they occupy a place that is both at odds with their theology, and in favour of it. The church has a hierarchy, which has at the top of it the Hierarch, who is elected by a committee, and is currently the position held by Cyrus Engelkind Hemelfart. And no, I didn't pronounce that wrong. Temple Isle, the island part of Novigrad, is where you will find the Grand Picket, which is also known as the Great Temple of the Eternal Fire, where the fire itself is supposedly housed. As I mentioned before, there are three unofficial military branches of the church. First up, we have the Temple Guard, and they patrol the Grand Picket and protect it. Next up are the now defunct Order of the Flaming Rose, who were an order of knights who were formed in response to the influence of the Lodge of Sorceresses, who were putting their fingers in many places of power. The Order waged secret battles against them, whilst publicly performing witch and monster hunts. They were, however, by the events of the third game, devastated during the wars which preceded it, and their assets seized by the church, and many of them would go on to join the next group. In the events of The Witcher 3, the Eternal Fire is going through a purge of magic users and non-humans wherever it can, either in Novigrad or outside of it, and its tool to do so is a faction known as the Witch Hunters. In areas that the church controls, they were there to root out magic and magic users, and whilst not officially aligned to anybody, the church supported them as they were, in essence, a sect of Eternal Fire zealots who were upholding the tenets of the faith, albeit in extreme and violent manners. From what we can see in the games and books, preaching is important to them as is devotion in the form of prayer and defence of the faith from all that might sully it. Those that question the power of the flame may find themselves at the wrong end of a witch hunter's pointy stick. You're either all in or you're not in at all. And this is all starting to sound very familiar, isn't it? So let's finally check how the church compares to the real world. Well, the Church of the Eternal Fire is quite obviously inspired by a certain other religion that may have been really powerful, may have had militaristic factions, may have had an inquisition or two, may have been involved in wars, and may have been evangelistic, and may have contributed to witch hunts, and yeah, it's quite obvious who the Church of the Eternal Fire is based on. Yep, it's obvious that they're based on the Catholic Church from the Middle Ages. The Hierarch is the Pope, Novigrad is a replacement for Italy and the Vatican, the robes look awfully similar as well. They look like Catholic monk robes, but they're either white or red, with a flame motif instead. The Witch Hunters, during their concept phase of creating The Witcher 3, were originally called the Inquisition. And as for the Order of the Flaming Rose, well, I mean, one look at these guys, and a look at some Crusader artwork, and it's obvious that they were modelled after them. We don't really get to see too much of the inner workings of the church in either the books or the games, but... Given what we do see, it is implied that the structure and practices are kind of the same as their real-world counterpart. In the first game, there is a soul reverend who holds a lot of sway over the populace, suggesting a similar sort of hierarchy to that of Catholicism, and suggesting that this reverend is a parish reverend, since he's seen ruling over a region. Eternal fire priests can often be found in Novigrad in the third game, and they're stood on soapboxes preaching against magic and monsters and non-humans. And there is even a mini-quest where the Witcher that we play as, Geralt, can confront a priest for his declaration of him being evil. Such is the church's influence, this priest then later sends thugs after him in order to teach him a lesson for humiliating him and the Eternal Flame in public. In Gwent, which is the card game offshoot from the Witcher games, we see cards for priests, zealots and flagellants, which were all found in medieval Christianity at some point. So, in terms of influence, this is pretty cut and dry. The Witcher is set in a medieval world tinged with magic, so it makes a lot of sense to take inspiration from the real-world medieval period, 
as there was a lot of stuff to take inspiration from, especially with the stuff that Catholicism was up to back then. So, question for you guys. What do you think of the Church of the Eternal Fire? Please do leave a comment. And if you've got any ideas for any other fictional religions or faiths that I could cover, please do leave a comment, because I'll add them to my list, uh, which seems to be ever-growing. Uh, well, I've lingered long enough on this subject, so that was the theology of the Church of the Eternal Fire. Please do toss a subscribe to your cask theologian, go grab a drink with your favourite dwarf, and like Geralt of Rivia, keep asking questions. <laughs>